WBB AM860 with your hosts Eric Lee and Rochelle Gaiman on Music Talk. I'm Eric Lee. Hi, I'm Rochelle Gaiman. And we're here with our guest David Osikinen from the Hooters. How you doing, David? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm doing really great. Nice to be here with you. All right. Uh tell us a little bit about the Hooters. Uh you guys originated in Philadelphia. What else? Well, uh God, we've been He's playing music for uh, over 30 years. We were all from Philadelphia, and we, um, you know, uh, just love playing music together. Started playing for the little fan base that we had. Mm -hmm. Started making our own records. uh, Then eventually signed with a a, a big record company, Columbia Records. uh, That's a big record company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the rest is history. I mean, we we were fortunate enough to work with a lot of really real close. Well, you know, it's a lot of of work. You're doing it, and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, thin meals, if you will. You know, we Mm kind of took a while to kind of make a little bit of, uh, have a little success, but eventually it paid off, and, you know, it's been good. Uh, What are the Hooters? Like, what type of music is it? Uh, we are a, uh, a, a rock, a rock band, I guess you would say rock pop, uh, you know, depending on what era we were talking about back in the early eighties, we were considered a pop rock band, I guess. Uh, did you guys tour anywhere special? Uh, we've toured in, uh, yeah, we've actually been all around the world. We've been to Australia, Germany, uh, Japan. Um, how was Japan? Japan is a great place. I loved going over there. It's been a while since we've been. A lot of fans in Japan? Yeah, I think, you know, we did okay. I still get some mail. It's been a while since we've been over there. Ah. All right. Um, I know uh, you were MTV's uh, Video Music Award nominee for uh, the best new video for And We Danced. Uh Uh, That was a huge hit, right? Yeah, I think that was probably uh, that. You know, people just just... Because it, it still gets a lot of airplay on, oh, yeah. on radio stations, you know, uh, Germany and the U.S. And uh, so people just assume that was the, uh, the 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 biggest hit we had. But I believe "And We Danced" charted higher than that. No, I'm sorry, "Day by Day" charted higher than "And We Danced." But it was a different world back then. Even the way they reported uh, music uh, nowadays, everything you know, computers and you know, you can sound scan. It changed how. Uh-huh. People report and, and and things like that, but where, it was a big success for us. Where did the name Hooters come from? Well, not from the restaurant. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I didn't assume so. Yeah, I it, wondered about that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it wasn't from the restaurant. It was um, the Hooters name came from um, uh, an instrument that, that we used, and well, we still do. But back in the day, on a lot of the stuff that we were working on, uh, Rob would play a melodica. And um, our um, our engineer, and he still we still work, uh, and I ver- I work very closely with John Senior, who's been engineering a, a a a lot of the stuff that we do within the pocket work with uh, uh, um, Hooters early stuff and into the last. I think he did uh, Time Stand Still, a record we yeah. did a, a few years back. He gave the nickname. Uh, he would call the melodica a Hooter, and that's sort of like play that Hooter thing. Mm. Oh. So it just kind of stuck, you know, and uh, it looked good in print. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, is everyone from Philadelphia? Are you from Philadelphia? Yeah, I, I grew up in Levittown. I grew up in Levittown, Levittown, PA, and uh, but lived in the city for, for, for many years. And, uh, and ju- I just got back. I, I moved back to Philadelphia a couple of years ago. I lived in, in Ca- Southern California for 20 years oh. and came back to Philadelphia because I missed it. How about all the Aww. members? Are they all from the local area? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, Rob grew up in Connecticut, he, uh, uh, a little town called Meriden. Mm. And, but every, everyone else um, are basically local guys. Fran Smith resides in South Jersey. Oh. And uh, he's our, you know, our, you know, our lone wolf out there in, in Jersey. Yeah, I got a question. I've always wondered this. Well, what is it like hearing your songs on the radio? Like your own... You know, it, production on the radio. Uh, it's it's great. Even to this day, you, you hear it. I remember um, it was many moons ago when I first heard uh, the song that you played, All You Zombies. We we actually had different versions of that song, and, and the uh, 
the first time I heard it, um, it came from a live um, broadcast. Uh, we played at a place called Emerald City, which used to be the old Latin casino in New Jersey. And we did a show for, um, I think it was a live concert for, uh, for a WMMR back in the day. Mm-hmm. And we did, uh, and they took some live uh, recordings from that show, and they started playing it on the radio. It wasn't the first thing that was played, but it was the—I think it was the first thing that I heard. We did an instrumental of a Scottalite song called "Man in the Street" before that, that Michael Tiersen used to play on the radio. But I heard "All You Zombies" for the first time, and it was—you know—I nearly drove off the road. <laughs> you guys played uh, Live Aid and opened up for the Who. Like, what? What, kind of, what was that like? <laughs> I was probably well. Nuts. You know, uh, opening up for the Who was. That was the that was 1982, and we were just starting out. We formed in 1980, and it was the Who, the Clash, Santana, and the Hooters. Now the oh, Hooters wow. were, we were just starting out, and this happened an opportunity. Larry Maggot of Electric Factory Concerts was always very supportive of what we were doing, and early on he 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 saw something that I don't even think that we saw, and uh, but he, he he got us on that bill. And uh, but the an interesting thing about that evening was that we were opening for the Who, but I didn't see the Who because we had another gig in Richmond, Virginia, oh. and we we were hopping into a van and leaving as the Who were going on the stage. So I really didn't get a chance to see them. But I saw the Clash play, which was great, and Carlos Santana sat behind me when we were doing our set, and he thought we were cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and, uh, and Carlos so, Santana, yeah, thinks you're cool. Uh, yeah, you're cool. yeah, yeah. So it was it was a monumental moment for for all of us. And of course, Live Aid was great to be involved with such a, 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 a global event. Back then, it was like one of the first of its kind. So it was really, really, really pretty neat doing it. Okay, so again, we are here live with David Osikinen, the drummer for the Hooters. Yeah. Are you also a songwriter? No, okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a songwriter. I mean, I've, I've, I'm credited as writing a couple things because, you know, I was there. No, only kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I, 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 but I'm not a songwriter, and okay. and I and and uh, I've worked with a couple really great songwriters. I participated in the creation of songs, and uh, but as a craft, I'm not a songwriter. Okay. I contribute musically to the song, but um, but I think that is uh, um, something you really got to work at. And, Mm-hmm. You know, so you uh, do what you do best. Well, I think so. I mean, yes. I like to kind of mess around and and uh, work with different guys. But um, it sounds not... like you're not giving yourself enough credit. Well, I don't know. You know, well, I think <laughs> I give credit to guys that really are songwriters. I mean, I've got yeah. some songwriting credit, but it's not not what I do. I think songwriting is like you know, I think it's like being a drummer. You know, you practice at, you work mm-hmm. at it. Um, it's not something I I really work at, although I love. I love playing on great songs. I love working with songwriters. And if I do have an idea and I get credit for it, fantastic. All the better then. So right now you are promoting Essential Songs of Philadelphia. Yeah, it's actually called uh, uh, In the Pocket, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Essential Songs of Philadelphia. It's a a project that I started uh, almost a couple years ago where I recorded. When I I moved back to Philadelphia, I thought... um, why not record some of the songs that I really loved coming up in the city? Inspired me, not only just the songs, but the artists and the scene that they came from. And so I started doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it's it's a really cool project because I get to work with artists that I, from a city that I normally don't get a chance to play with. Bring in these really cool singers that I've always admired. We've had Richie and Charlie from the Soul Survivors, mm-hmm. most recent, recently Ben Arnold, uh, Richard Bush, for, Bush from the A's, Tommy Conwell, uh, uh, Jeffrey Gaines. He sang "Open My Eyes," which is a song by the Naz, which was just incredible. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a cool project because a portion of the proceeds benefit the Settlement Music School, which is a school that's been around. Uh, Philadelphia for many moons and right. it does you know if if you want to learn to play an instrument it's it's a wonderful wonderful uh, school. Is yes. there anyone from uh, from the Hooters that's with you in the project? Yeah, actually uh, there are. Uh, Rob has uh, been in, involved with it. Uh, as I mentioned, John Senior, who's done a lot of uh, work Hyman. with the Hooters. Rob Hyman. Uh, 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 Eric Bazilian has played on a couple things. Uh, actually, as of now, I've had all the Hooters participate on. Uh, in the pocket in one way or another. They've all played on, uh, never at the same time, but they've played on different tracks. 
And wow. uh, I've had Greg Davis from Brew Review, Rick DeFonso, who played with the A's, and Roger Waters, Patty Smythe. Um, Jerry Blavitt has been involved. Oh, Jerry uh, Blavitt, I know Jerry Yeah, Blavitt. yeah, yep. the Geeter <laughs> with the Eater. Uh, and um, so if you go to songsinthepocket.org, you can mm-hmm. actually even see we, we, what we do is at the website, we offer, you can buy, buy the songs that we recorded for 99 cents. And which takes you to iTunes or Amazon, whatever your preference mm-hmm. is. Um, and then also you can see a video of the making of each one of the tracks. So you can participate, if you will, visually, <laughs> spiritually with the uh, with with the uh, with the process. Yeah, I've actually seen a couple of those cool. videos and uh you know, they they all have each song has its own basically documentary, right? You know, yeah, like uh, yeah, made. it's goes Steve Acido from Blue Wire Media is uh he helps produce those. He produces and directs those videos when we're doing the session. Right. So it's kind of like it, it really is a little bit like old school in the sense that we all get together at the at the very same time and we record the track. Uh, all, the, all the creative process is done at you know that day when we're doing that, and someone comes and videotapes it. There's a photographer there, and um, it's really cool. It's a, it's a little old school in the sense that. Nowadays, a lot of music is done in different places. They send you tracks, you cut them, you send them. But when yeah. you get a group of musicians together all in the same room, there's a, a, a cool kind of energy is created, like we're doing here. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. You know, uh, being together over 30 years is a major accomplishment. Um, a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Commitment. So, you know, with that span of time, have you maintained all of the original members or have you gone through changes? You know, uh, with musicians? Well, yeah. N- n- well, to answer your question, yes n- no, we haven't had all the big. Well, actually, in, in this last year, one of the songs that we did in the, in the in pocket were were dedicated to members of the band that we lost in the last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original the ba- original bass player, Bobby Woods, he passed away not this January before the uh, January 2010. Uh, was it 11? I guess it was 11 he passed 11. away. And then uh, and John Kuzma, we lost him in July. Uh, so we did the song, Soon You Will Be Gone, which they used to perform with the Hooters. And they were original members of the Hooters. And um, But, you know, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we've been through a, a few different bass players. Our, it's funny. The bass player that we have today is a guy named Fran Smith Jr. who's been in the band. He's our newbie. Mm-hmm. He's been in the band for 28 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and that's but he was the original guy. He <laughs> was the original guy that we wanted in the band. Um, but he didn't show up for for, for whatever, the, the, the rehearsal. So oh. <laughs> we another, went another way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's Do you really tour awesome. with the In the Pocket? Have you done live shows? Yeah, we actually, we just played a show on Tuesday at the World Cafe Live, which was a sold-out oh, show. Yeah. And thank yeah. you to anybody who's Terrific. listening. It was, it was great. And um, we've been doing, and, and we're talking about doing maybe something out, you know, like uh, something in May. It's not confirmed yet, but we'll do something, uh, not in the city, but outside of the city, which I'm, excited about hopefully never and, sell out yeah hopefully i mean people yeah. have been supporting the project they've been great i mean uh, live is it's just a lot of fun because there's 15 of us that play live i mean tj tyndall joins us who played on a lot of the gamble on uh, gamble and huff recordings mm-hmm. he played with the oj's and uh, bonnie Raitt, uh richie and charlie from the soul survivors uh, uh jay davidson uh, bobby michaels eric bazillion steve butler uh uh, um, Cliff Hillis, um, Tommy Conwell. It's it's a really remarkable night of music. It's very cool. What gave you the idea of like starting this new project? Well, I think it was my it, Philadelphia is my uh, uh, moving back. I felt this incredible energy in the city. I, mean, I always loved, you, you know, it was where I where I where I you grew got a lot of Philadelphia. And, but I'm you know I moved away from Philadelphia, and then right. when I came back. I could, there was this, um, I said it, I don't know if it was the Phillies winning or the restaurant scene, but there was a, there was a vibe that I felt in the city that, um, as much as I loved Philadelphia that I didn't feel before. And it it was just energy. And I don't know, maybe that was possibly me just coming back and recognizing things that I didn't recognize, but that was the inspiration behind in the pocket. For me, it's always music. Oh, of music. course. Yeah. Where do you want this to go? Where do you want to take this? Uh, well, I've been asked a lot about uh, are we going to release a, a CD? And right now, you know, it's it's not really in the works. It's been a singles project. If you we, it, 
we, we re- release something every three months on the net. If the fans, if people, you know, we'll, we'll know when it's the right time to put out a CD. But it's been well received. And um, yeah, I just want to keep on doing it as long as we can do it. As long as it's supported, we'll keep going. Well, you'll definitely be supported in Philadelphia. Oh, Everyone I knows so. the I yep. hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Okay, so again, we are here with David all sickening. Very good. <laughs> we were kidding I, around about that I'm name. I'm getting yep. it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Very unique name. Yeah. That definitely stands out. Uh, the drummer with the Hooters promoting Essential Songs of Philadelphia. Again, the website is songsinthepocket.org, and you can download songs from their newest project uh, for 99 cents. Yeah. And, again, a portion of those proceeds benefit the... Settlement Music School. B- Settlement Music School, which Yeah, is which I should fantastic. incidentally mention that Ben Arnold went to the Settlement Music School, who mm-hmm. plays in the, in the Pocket, Tommy Conwell went there, Greg Davis, some of the alumni that... From uh, Settlement Music School, Stanley Clark, G. Love, wow. the Bacon Brothers. Uh, it's a it's a great school. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to go into break. We're going to play a few of your songs. Cool. All right, let's do that. Hey, pretty baby, you can't see that. Oh, don't you hear the drama you can't see that. You gotta shake it like crazy. You can't see that. I cause a panic, saying something. You can't see that. Hey, everybody in the jump. Whatever your taste in music, Victoria's Kitchen provides the same desirable taste as your music caterer. Enjoy music to eat by with a full range of catering services for music executives, talent promoters, CD parties, corporate and family functions. Enjoy swanky entrees, sensational sandwiches, fresh salads, delectable desserts, homemade drinks, grilled chicken dishes, and so much more. Experience the best soul food in town at Victoria's Kitchen, 7304 Ogons Avenue in Philadelphia, featuring live entertainment now on Tuesday nights with Open Buffet for only $10. Experience the best soul food catering with music to eat by. Visit victoriaskitchen-philly.com or call 215-276-2170. That's 215-276-2170. Or text Vickies, that's V-I-K-K-I-S, to 41242 for instant discount coupons. Interested in the people that make music and the music business behind the music? Tune in to Music Talk on WWDB every Thursday at noon. Hear talent and business owners affiliated with many different aspects of music. Here on WWDB every Thursday at noon. It's Music Talk with your hosts, Eric Lee and Rochelle Gaiman. To be a guest interviewee or sponsor, call 484-562-0063. That's 484-562-0063. Call now. Change reaction, it's on you. You're a domino. Change reaction, showing through. Slow motion. Change reaction, it'll do. For the jam you're in. Change reaction, it's on you. We're here with the drummer from the Hooters, David Osikinen. Uh What what happened to the Hooters? Uh, well, uh, we still tour. We don't really tour that much in the uh, in the uh, in the U.S. Most of our, our touring these days is in Europe. Ger- when was Ger- your last tour? Uh, we got back in November. Oh, all right. And um, we. Um, and primarily Germany, but we've been playing a bit in Scandinavia these days. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Got a lot of fans in Scandinavia. Yeah. They really? do well, well enough that we go over that's pretty there. Cool. Every, yeah, I wouldn't really nice. think about anything like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
you have a new you, you when you took a break from the Hooters, you started a new business where people send you music tracks or drum tracks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that would be a I have a of a little business called Dave U Drums. So if if the, any of you songwriters out there ever want to send you get me on your track, you can send it to me. Just go daveudrums.com. Mm-hmm. You can send a track. Yeah, it was uh it's it it, it was you know, for a period there when we were off the road, um I worked for a technology company and uh I really got into it. You know, I thought that, you know, back in 1998. Um, Were you into that stuff? Like, that's sort of no, a transition. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I really, I think it, for me, I think it was being at the right place at the right time. And Oh, but you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I, I thought it was fascinating that you could get, I only knew about CDs. At that time. And when I went to uh, meet with this guy, Michael Robertson, who started this company, mp3.com, he um, he showed me his hard drive and he told me there were 100,000 songs in there. Now, this is 1998. And I'm like, I'm thinking, how do you how do you do that? And uh, and it was like the beginning of this um, of, of musicians uh, using compression files to upload their music to the Web. And uh, it o- o- offered an opportunity for, for musicians to promote themselves to a whole new audience. And uh, so I worked for this company for about five years. And um, obviously, you know, I, you're, I was there long enough that I, I mean, I liked it. I thought it was great. And um, so basically, um, this the, and Dave U Drums was a um, kind of a, like a, I you know I borrowed from some of the ideas that they had there with basically getting information out. If an artist wants to send me a file, they can you know put their information on what would they call it, like a what they call a bug ticket, and they let me know what, how they want me to play it, when they huh. how they want me to cut it. And uh, you know I take the file, import it, and I cut it in the studio, and then I send it back to them. Not so for free. Cool. No, it, it's there's a, there's a small fee. It's three, <laughs> yeah, it, if you go to the website, but it's pretty cheap. You know, it's the three. I, I'm, you know, my price is three hundred dollars to cut the track, but that's wow. that's that's uh, um, nowadays. You know, it, it is uh, cost effective yes. in a sense that um, you know I can knock it out, send it send it to somebody, and uh, but there are uh, artists out there. You know, when you're making a record, you know, and using the studio and the studio costs and all those mm-hmm. things, it gets pretty yes. uh, pretty expensive. So is this for all genres, or is this primarily for rock? Well, uh, 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 if most if if an artist sends me a song and I think it's out of my wheelhouse, um, mm-hmm. I'll tell them. But I usually like to try to give it a shot. I I have a guarantee with these people. They, if they don't like it, you know, I say you know, I'll, you know, you don't have to pay for it. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> That's uh, fair. but I, I I generally wow. like to give a crack at any genre if I can uh, if I you know, I mean I primarily play rock and. Uh, and 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 reggae and uh, okay. and stuff like that, but you know, I, I give anything a shot. So that's pretty much a combination with your like internet and skills, and then brought to the music. So you just started your own sort of company, not company, but no, know, it, track it, it it is something that I thought was a um, it using that technology and, uh, you know, the World Wide Web. You know, this is the way that you can work with an artist that's in Germany. Some of my business I get is from Germany. That's very cool. Like, what type of, what type of like, German, like, music do they send you? Like, um, like just rock and roll? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's different, you know. It's I, I'm saying it's different, it, different kinds of rock and roll, if you will. Right. I've, yeah. I, I've, you know, there is American rock and roll in that yeah. European type. Yeah. It's different styles. But they like American rock and roll in in, in Europe. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, your video documentaries uh, for songs in the pocket is on WHYY TVs on Canvas. Well, there is a, uh, we did a show, um, oh God, when was it? I guess it was last July, was it last July when we released um, You Can't Sit Down? Uh, and there's this cool, they have this great show, it's called On Canvas, that, and they there's it's a half hour program of the show that we did at the World Cafe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jeffrey Gaines is on that, Tommy Conwell's on that, a couple of the guys from the Hooters, Robin Eric. 
uh, Greg Davis. And that was a lot of fun. Okay, so so the songs again on the project are Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction, which is a, a Robert Hazard song. Uh, Robert Hazard was a, a Philly icon. He wrote the song "Girl Girls Just Want to Have Fun." Oh, he wrote okay. that song. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't know that? Song? Yeah, right. yeah. He's nope. he's uh, he was he was great, and um, we did that. And and we all did, my Mondays. All my Mondays that was about? that was a song. Uh, all my Mondays. It's uh, uh, written by uh, what well, was a band called Youth Camp that did it, and Joey Wilson uh, was a uh, a, uh, a Philly favorite of mine. I got a chance. I was lucky enough to play with him in a band. He was he was terrific. Okay. And open my eyes open was the song eyes. by Naz, which was Todd Rudgren. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can sit down. Yeah, you, you can't. You, oh, yeah, can't you can't sit, sit down, down, which was the Dovells. Oh, you uh, can't sit cannot down. Cannot sit, sit down. Okay. <laughs> and the idea of this is that you can't sit down when you hear it. <laughs> oh, okay. So. <laughs> and then finally, soon you'll be gone. Which was not a Philly song, but uh, John Kuzma and Bobby Woods would play that with the Hooters and it was by a band called the blues busters. And, uh, you know, they, John and Bobby just, just nailed it every night they played it. And I thought we would do that as a tribute to them. Wow. Oh, David, this is all just wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show here on WWDB AM 860. Thanks for having me. You're quite welcome. It's our pleasure. And again, you can get the music from the Hooters at Songs in the Well, Pocket. actually, actually, it's not the the Hooters from the some of the Hooters are playing on that, but right. it is at Songs in the Pocket. Right. Songs in the Pocket. Thank you very much, David, for being with us. Thanks. Underneath your gaze, I was found in in the haze. I am wandering around in. I am lost in the dark of my own room, and I can't see a thing but the fire in your eyes. Some you'll forget me, but the thought of the doesn't upset me. I'm blind to whatever they're saying, and all I can see is.